One Punch Man is an anime about a guy named Saitama who is basically the most overpowered superhero to ever exist. So much to the point that he can literally defeat enemies with one punch, as the title suggests. And to anybody else, this would probably be the coolest thing ever. But to him, he's actually getting a bit sick and tired of his powers because basically he can't find anyone that matches his skill level because he defeats them in literally one punch and sometimes even just poking them will defeat them. But all of this changes when he bumps into a guy named Genos who wants to become his sidekick and things start to escalate from there as the show goes on. For those of you that don't know, throughout the whole of 2019 I will be reviewing a different anime show or movie every month for the entire year and I thought I would start off with probably one of my favourite, if not my all-time favourite anime show, One Punch Man. I mean, where do I begin with this show? There's so much to love about it. The animation by Funimation, I think that's the company that makes it, um, the, the animation in the show is brilliant, and it's kind of a shame that there's only one series out at the moment, which came out back in 2015, because series two has been in the pipeline for quite some time, and I'm still not even sure when it's going to come out. It, apparently it was going to come out at the end of 2018, but it's not, and it's not coming out until 2020. And yeah, I'm not 100% sure when Series 2 is coming out, but I will be there when it does, because Series 1 is just so good. If you hadn't figured it out already, this show is basically a beat-em-up fighting anime show. Kind of along the same line as Dragon Ball Z and Gundam and all those kind of things. But the best thing about One Punch Man is that it actually kind of takes the piss out of those things whilst also doing it justice as well. Because the fighting in this show is some of the best I've ever seen in animated form. The animation, especially during the quieter moments, is very traditional anime. It's very smooth, very slick, and very nice to look at. And it is like that for pretty much the whole show. But when the fight scenes get incredibly intense, the drawing style and the animation gets a lot more rough and jagged, to the point where you can actually see the draw lines of everything that's going on. That's how rough and in your face it gets. And you would think the smooth and slick animation style would contrast and be a bit jarring compared to the rough and jagged stuff you get during the action scenes. But it's not jarring at all. In fact, it can it uh, seamlessly goes between the two quite nicely. Um, because you have the nice slick stuff in the quieter moments and then this rough and jagged stuff during the action scenes, it actually makes those fight scenes have a bit more of an impact and makes them a lot more memorable when revisiting it. Because there are certain moments in this anime that I will probably be stuck in my head for years to come, more than other animes that I've seen, just because of how well they are animated. For example, there's one scene in particular where he's fighting this monster bloke who basically is a bit like a mole uh, who travels underground. And all of this scene is bloody well animated and is very fluid and energetic, but the way it just suddenly grounds to a halt when Saitama pokes his head underground is both hilarious and grained in my head because of how well it's animated. And that's another thing, the humour in this show is spot on. Like I said, it perfectly parodies the over-the-top fighting animes like Dragon Ball Z, but also knows how to pay them homage as well. Uh, because there are quite a few moments in this show where you really do feel for Saitama and the fact that he's kind of lost interest in the very thing that he used to enjoy doing because he's so good at it. But then they throw curveballs at you, for, uh, for example, when him and Genos go to sign up to become registered superheroes, Genos becomes a high-class superhero, probably the highest class you can ever be. And Saitama ends up becoming one of the lower-class ones, all because he failed the writing test. He absolutely smashed the physical, 
but the fact that his apprentice gets a higher grade than he does just because Saitama fucked up the written exam, I just find that absolutely hilarious because you've been watching this character from the start and you know just how powerful Saitama is. So the fact that his apprentice, who, yeah, is quite powerful, ends up getting a higher grade than him just makes that whole thing a lot more funnier. But then it kind of plays out throughout the rest of the series in, I suppose, a kind of heartwarming way, especially the way Saitama kind of uh, creates this friendship with one of the other lower graded superheroes whose name I can't remember but his superpower is, is that he basically just rides a bike everywhere. I thought that was a little nice touch because the show knows quite well when to go for full-on humour and when to go for some occasional emotion. The emotion never takes up the bulk of the show, which I'm kind of glad it doesn't, because I think it would distract otherwise. But when the small amounts of emotion are there, it works pretty well. Like I said, it never gets too in your face, like a silent voice where it's just pure emotion and nothing else. But when it does work, it does work very well. I also really like the wide variety of superheroes you get to see in this universe. That being said, there is one superhero in particular that confused me when I first saw it and still confuses me now, and that's Puri Puri Prisoner. The best way I can describe him is that his superpower is homosexuality. That is literally his superpower. And He's just so weird, like, the show, yeah, can be quite bizarre and funny, especially during the first half, but as soon as he appears, everything just gets just a bit weirder, because his entire presence is just baffling. For example, like, he pretty much has a crush on any male superhero he comes across, like, literally any superhero he comes across he's instantly in love with and then his main superpower is sprouting wings out of his back and kind of throwing rainbows at people like i don't know what the fuck the writers were on when they made it but it's just really bizarre it fits with the tone of the show perfectly but i'm still confused as to what the point of the character is anyway but yeah, in the end, this is one of my favourite anime shows. Probably my favourite anime show at the point, this point in time. And I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I highly recommend you watch it if you haven't already. And yeah, I, I, I mean, this was a pretty good one to start the anime series on. I won't lie, because I wanted to kind of start off strong with a show that I know I loved. And yeah, One Punch Man was probably the best one I could have chose. So guys, that was my review of One Punch Man and the first review in this series of anime reviews. I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to talking about more anime over the course of the year. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye!